Hello viewers, you are most welcome to Raxio Hour. It's always great having you back with us. Sitting along the banks of the mighty river Nile at Karuma Falls in Chiriandongo district is a 600 megawatts hydropower plant expected to be the largest power generating installation in the country upon its commission later this year. Raxio embarked on yet another adventurous road trip following our first trip in January to the Albertine Graben region to explore the oil and gas project. If you missed it, click the link in the description box to watch. The Raxio team in Uganda was privileged to visit the 600 megawatts Karuma hydropower project in Chiriandongo district operated by the Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited, UEGCL, to learn more about the source of Raxio's power. Power generation poses a significant impact on the environment. As a data center that operates on high energy levels, we are conscious of our impact on environmental conservation, hence opting for less environmentally degrading forms of energy such as hydroelectricity as our primary source of power generation. Listen as Albert Musokebi Aruhanga, the project manager of the Karuma Hydropower Project, walks us through the power generation process at the hydropower project and how hydropower as a source of green energy plays significantly into environmental sustainability. My name is Albert Musokebi Aruhanga. I work with the Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited, UEGCL, as the project manager on the 600 megawatt Karuma Hydropower Project. Uh, my responsibility entails uh, leading the project implementation unit uh, on behalf of UEGCL, which is the implementing agency on behalf of Government of Uganda uh, for the hydropower component of the Karuma Hydropower Project. And our mandate uh, goes as far as uh, supervision and monitoring of the activities of both the EPC contractor and the owner's engineer uh, to make sure they deliver uh, their responsibilities in accordance with the respective uh, EPC contract for the construction and uh, the supervision contract uh, for the consultancy. Uh, but hydropower by its nature uh, is normally referred to as a renewable or a green energy because uh, the impacts on the environment and the ecosystem are minimal compared to, for instance, uh, fossil fuel uh, driven uh, power plants like uh, coal, fire stations, um, HFO uh, stations, uh, heavy fuel oils, which um, use up fossil fuels throughout the entire time uh, they are in operation. Whereas the environmental impacts of hydropower are more or less limited to the construction period and with a good uh, management uh, measures, those can be uh, mitigated uh, quite reasonably. So. You're using the same water to generate over and over again. And in this case, we are harnessing uh, the energy of the water in the River Nile. At Karuma Hydropower Project, uh, which is a hydropower project like the name suggests, uh, power is essentially generated by harnessing uh, the energy of flowing water and converting it to produce electricity. Uh, water, when it's stored, uh, we have a dam which uh, is a structure that helps us uh, retain water to form uh, a reservoir. In that state, uh, water has uh, what you call potential energy. Uh, then this potential energy is converted by allowing water to flow through what we call a penstock or a pressure shaft. Uh, the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy, which is the energy of uh, water flowing or in a flowing state. Uh, the water flows to what we call a turbine. Uh, the turbine is driven by the water and now the kinetic energy of the water is converted to mechanical energy. Then the turbine is attached to a generator which has two main parts, the stator and the rotor. So the mechanical energy from the turbine is converted to electrical energy by the generator through uh, an electromagnetic uh, conversion process. So in essence, you're harnessing the energy of water and converting it to electrical energy through that process. And the key factors here, uh, one is the volume of water stored, uh, which is in the reservoir, and two is the difference in height from the uh, inlet to the outlet, which uh, in physics is called the waterhead. 
those are the two main factors uh, that will determine how much potential you have to generate at a given location. Uh, under the Karuma Hydropower project, uh, the installed capacity for the plant is 600 megawatts and that is six units each with a capacity of 100 megawatts. Now to guarantee uh, uptime for uh, installations like uh, yours, the data center running at Raxio and many others, be it you know, hospitals, schools, factories, uh, manufacturing plants, everyone wants uh, stable uh, and reliable electricity. And actually that's incorporated in the UEGCL's uh, mission statement, which is to sustainably generate reliable, quality and affordable electricity for social economic development of the nation. Uh, you need to have an appreciation of the electricity, if I may call it the food chain. So you have the generation plants which generate the electricity, then you have the transmission company which does the high voltage transmission, then finally you have the distribution companies which do the distribution to the end users or what we normally call the last mile. So the generation gives you a steady or a stable supply, but you also need a good network for transmission and distribution to ensure you have uh, a high uh, uptime for whatever application it is that you need the electricity for. Uh, in as far as the generation part is concerned, uh, with say Karuma coming on board, as well as uh, the other uh, power, hydropower plants uh, which are either due for commissioning soon or recently commissioned, it means we have enough supply uh, onto the grid. So that means we've moved away from the days where we had load shedding, where you have only a limited amount of electricity being generated and you have to apportion it to the various uh, competing uh, end users. So once you have uh, a stable uh, supply, and ideally for hydropower, the supply must stay ahead of the demand. Uh, for large public projects like Karuma, you're looking at a minimum of five years, six, seven, for construction alone. But the project development process can take even over 10 years. So you cannot simply wake up and you have 600 megawatts or 200 megawatts on the grid. It takes time. So you need to ensure the supply side stays ahead of the demand so that as the demand grows, uh, the country is planning for uh, new developments to increase uh, that supply. In the event that uh, there is a drop in supply, uh, it could be a result of an outage, and there are two main types of outages. One is what we call the planned outage, where you know on this date in a given month for maybe five days or two weeks, depending on uh, the volume of uh, operation and maintenance uh, related activities to be performed. You can plan and you know for a week or two weeks we are going to shut down either the entire plant, which is very rare, but normally you shut down a unit or two, do some works, then they come back online. The other type is a forced outage. Um, you're aware of uh, times we have national blackouts, maybe there's a problem on the grid or it has happened at, uh, at source at the power plant itself. That's what we call a forced outage. So there are the two types. Uh, in terms of how do you ensure uh, minimal disruption? Again, it goes back to how much supply capacity is there on the grid system. So with the plant with a sufficient capacity like Karuma coming on board, that means there is a sufficient supply. So if something goes wrong at any uh, generating plant, um, we describe the load in main, uh, three main categories. We have the base load, then we have what we call uh, the peak and shoulder load, then there is also what we call the reserve capacity. So the reserve capacity allows you to pick up that uh, lost supply. In the event like say, you maybe have an 100 megawatt plant, it goes offline, Whereas Karuma has an installed capacity of say 600, but it is operating at 400 megawatts. It means you have a reserve capacity of 200 megawatts. 
So if there's a problem somewhere of up to say 200 megawatts, you ramp up the production at Karuma until that problem is sorted out. But if you're operating at, at peak, you're using up all your capacity, then it means should anything arise, either you have to resort to HFO or maybe other forms of energy it's because you don't have uh, what I would call the insurance policy. Something has gone down and then within the system you have uh, that reserve capacity to pick up uh, the lost uh, supply. Uh, in order to safeguard uh, the environment and the ecosystem within which hydropower developments and hydropower generation takes place, uh, there is a number of considerations that need to be uh, put into place uh, throughout the project life cycle. Uh, first and foremost is uh, you carry out what we call environmental social impact assessment studies, uh, Asia. In there you go to the project or planned project site, you look at the environment, the ecosystem, what are the factors, what are the would-be uh, uh, problems associated with the development, how can they be mitigated, you look at how the local communities are going to be affected, could it be their livelihoods, could it be uh, things like waste and the like. Then you draw up a plan where basically it's a risk management uh, kind of activity, you identify uh, potential hazards, then you also earmark the mitigation measures and how they are going to be implemented. So that is all captured in the uh, environmental and social impact assessment study, which is part of the feasibility studies uh, for any hydropower uh, development. Then, during, uh, at the start of the construction, you carry out a baseline study. For instance, uh, Karuma is within the precincts of the Makshon Falls National Park and the Karuma Wildlife Reserve. You have to do baseline studies, for instance, for animals, uh, animal sightings, are you seeing any elephants, are you seeing any buffaloes, monkeys, baboons, uh, crocodiles, uh, you have to do aquatic studies for fish species, uh, you have to do uh, checks on you know, available water sources, uh, carry out water quality tests in case for instance people are using boreholes, will they be contaminated or maybe will they run dry, then you have what we call a baseline, then continually, periodically you carry out audits and you reference with the baseline and that goes on throughout the entire construction period. So that system is in place at Karuma and there is a, an oversight committee, we call it a multi-sectoral uh, committee uh, involving uh, regulatory and other government uh, agencies like the Uganda Wildlife Authority, the National Environment Management Authority, the Department for Occupational Health and Safety, uh, Department for Water Resources Management and many others. Raxio Data Center would like to appreciate the team at Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited for an opportunity such as this. Thank you for tuning in to Raxio Hour. Have a lovely weekend.